And we are live. Welcome to the Music Success Show. I'm your host. My name is Roy. And I'm bringing you another special guest. All the guests are special, but I got to tell you, this one is very special. And you're going to understand why. He's an American music producer based in Houston, Texas. He's best known for his highly active hi-hats and dancing 808s that really bring the Southern feel to the forefront. He has produced eight songs on the TV series Growing Up Hip Hop and Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta from We TV Network. He recently just had a song coming out in late October 2021 with Lil Wayne and Tu Ching called Live Slow Slow. He has a song with Neo coming out in March 2022. And he really enjoys helping upcoming artists and giving them a chance to reach mainstream. His name is Six Points. Welcome to the show. It's such a pleasure to have you here, buddy. Hey, man, I appreciate the opportunity. Definitely. It's a blessing, man. Yeah, thank you so much for being here because uh, you are, I have all sorts of people on the show, right? I have from people are only three months in the music industry to people yeah. who actually are connecting in the music industry. And the point to that is, um, we, my viewpoint is we can learn from everybody. Right. So obviously, if you are connected and you've done a lot of stuff, like is your case, uh, you bring a lot of value. So I would like to first start by asking you what made you decide to be to do music and be in the music industry, since it's such a hard area for most people to break it through. Yeah, most definitely. Um, for me, I would definitely say it was just something I'm supposed to do, if that makes sense. Like, you kind of know, like, you're calling, you know what you gravitate towards. Like, music for me, this is something I gravitated towards. I was that kid that was, like, pulling out my mom's pots and pans when I was three and four, like, banging on that, turning that, just trying to make sounds, or didn't really necessarily um, do the piano lessons, but I'm over here playing songs on the piano when I'm a kid and coming up with some creative tunes. And my mom, at least she was like, Hey, that was actually pretty good. You should keep going. <laughs> um, I was in band in high school. I did a percussion. I was in the drum line. Um, and I would have kept doing that, but also played sports. Um, so that's actually how I learned music production was my freshman year. I was playing football at the Naval Academy. And one of my teammates, um, I was actually going in there to play. I'm in a video game called 2K. And I was going to beat him. I was going to come out on top. Uh, and in that room, he was work, working on a program called Fruity Loop Studio. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I was like, what is that? I had no idea at the time. And he's like, oh, yeah, there's a program called Fruity Loops. I'm making a beat right now. And I was like, you're making a beat on a laptop and like it has sounds? And he was like, yeah, man, it's a program. It's like you can pretty much program sounds and make music this way. I was like, oh, I was mind blown because I thought you can only make music through like instruments and like drum sounds and drum uh, drums. I didn't know it could be on a laptop where you're pressing buttons and it emulates the sound of a real instrument. And from that time on, I took the program, put it on my computer and I've been running with it since. I'm on Logic now. I graduated from Fruity Loops back in like 2015, but um, that definitely was the beginning part of me wanting to be a music producer for sure. Yeah, Logic is my favorite. I mean, there's mm -hmm. many DOS. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. it depends on what you love. Uh, I agree with you. Logic is so easy and so uh, user-friendly. So I, I understand your choice. Now, mm -hmm. uh, what, what was your life before, you know, uh, you know coming into music? How, how, what was the environment? How did you grow up and what influenced uh, you to uh, get into the music uh, side of things? Yeah, so I'm from Dallas, Texas. Um, so I have one sister, both parents still alive. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a really good upbringing, childhood. Um, like I said, I played football, played sports. Um, I got an offer um, to the Naval Academy to play football for Navy. Um, so I ended up doing that. And so my life prior to music was really just sports and just figuring out how to be a happy kid. <laughs> uh, I was just trying to figure out what route I wanted to take. I always wanted to be an NFL player. So that was rule number one, goal number one. Um, but some injuries happened while I was in college that didn't necessarily let me get to that next level. Um, so once I realized I couldn't go to NFL due to injury, I was like, I don't want to be a complete failure in life. What else can I do? And I felt like, hmm, I've been picking up this music production pretty well in college. Let me just go full speed on that. And ever since I went full tilt on it, um, it's been nothing but 
blessings and more opportunities came from it. So definitely great. <laughs> yes. And then how did music change your life? What, 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 what did it bring to your life? Like you got into music, you start listening to, I don't know, hip hop or whatever influence R and B uh, pop. I'm, I'm guessing, right. Because it seems like you pity yeah. uh, uh, versatile, like how sure. did that changed your life. Um, yeah, it changed my life really in all the ways, um, whether it's just like when I was still playing sports, I'm listening to music to like get me pumped up or amped up before the game or practice I was dealing with, help me get my right mental state, or if it was after playing sports and just like creation of the music, um, the people that I've met, the networking that I've met, the opportunities that I've had, um, the life that I've been able to live, the things that I'm able to see that I wasn't able to see because of music. Um, so for me, I feel like without music, my life would have went a whole different route. Um, living in LA, I was living in LA for like four or five years. So just being able to have those experiences, I wouldn't necessarily had if I never took the music route. Um, and I feel like I'm still at the beginning, man. Like I feel like everything is still um, in the process of happening or gonna happen, if that makes sense. So I'm just grateful for the ride. I'm grateful for what's happened so far and I'm grateful to see what's to come. Yeah. And uh, how how do you, what 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 do you consider are your main influences in terms of the music that you do? What, what yeah, do um, my main influences um, I'll probably say are hmm, just wanting to make undeniable music that lasts forever, if that makes sense. So, like, an influence could be a song that I just can't turn off. That's just like on repeat that just makes sense. Or I study the billboard charts because that's the goal is to end up on billboards. So I'm just like constantly figuring out the chord progressions that they're on, the key, the, the tempo, what the artists are talking about writing wise. Um, I would say those are probably like my major influences because that's obviously where I want to go. Um, obviously growing up, you got Metro Boomin, you got Southside from 808 Mafia, you got Zaytoven, those guys, Shawty Red, um, definitely developed my sound for wanting to have heavy hitting 808 sounds. That's the drum that makes the boom. <laughs> uh, I'm really big on the boom. If the beat don't got a boom, it don't sound right. It's just not, not it. <laughs> it's not a bit. Okay. <laughs> Gotta have the boom in there. Exactly. Uh, and so I would say that was definitely probably my biggest influences, but really just wanting to be the best me and just make the best type of music I possibly can. Okay. And then what, what made you choose to be called six points. What, 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 was, what was the rationale behind that 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 artist name? Right. Uh, the reason why I go by six points is the football background that I have. I played running back. So the biggest contribution I could bring to my football team was scoring a touchdown. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm not playing football anymore, but I still want to contribute in a major way like that. Mm -hmm. So instead of calling myself touchdown, like that'd be kind of corny or cliche. I was like, hmm, what is a touchdown? A touchdown is six points, right? So I go by six points because I feel like every beat that I make is as good as scoring a touchdown. So the artists, they don't have to do too much. All they got to do is just make the extra point and they're going to win. If they really want to win, go for two. Let's get eight points. Let's get a Grammy. Come on. Okay, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> that makes sense. Now, I guess a lot of people are, uh, with, you, with your resume, they are asking, okay, so how did he manage to you know, uh, from Texas, uh, how did he manage to, con and I'm asking the same question, obviously, uh, how did he manage to connect with these major artists? I mean, because this, I think this is one of the main things in the music industry, right? If you're not yeah. connected, you're going to have a hard time and uh, you probably won't make it because if you, if you don't have your network, if, if you don't have people around you to support you, Uh, even if your music is great, uh, it's not probably going to go anywhere, right? Would you agree with that? 100%. So how did you manage to navigate through the industry? Did you have the mentor? Did you have the, you know, did you, did you grab a, a, a directory and say, okay, I'm going to call all these people? Did you have the manager, booking agent? How did you manage to do that? Oh, man, honestly, I got a huge faith in God and belief in him and I just know I got a huge faith in myself and belief in myself mm -hmm. and I know that nothing is going to just be given to you and if it is given to you it's not going to last that long so you're going to appreciate it 
Um, so what I did, no, I don't have a manager. I don't have all the other stuff. I really just got it out the mud. Um, I researched on Google certain networking events. I found this one called Ask Cap Expo. Mm -hmm. um, and it was in LA. It was in April. Um, I think it's coming up again this year in April. Um, so for all those that really want to like network and like build a nice little team, um, definitely going to ASCAP Expo will allow you to just meet other creators, meet managers, meet labels, meet ARs, meet if you're trying to get into TV and film, meet supervisors and music editors, just things to help you get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And so I went there uh, back in 2016 and I met so many people that I'm still in contact with today that got me to the opportunity of where I'm at today. Just it's really based on relationships and you're not going to get any relationships unless you get yourself out there, whether it's like sending emails, going to networking events. And I know it's COVID going around. So I know some people may be a little iffy about being in big settings like that. So I, it's definitely understandable. But if you really want to go get it, man, you're not going to worry about nothing crazy. You're just going to know like, man, I'm going to go do this because I might meet somebody that might introduce it. They might even might not be the main play, but you meeting them, they may know somebody that could help or that person may know somebody that knows somebody that could help. You know what I'm saying? But you, you just having that connection and you building that genuine energy. Um, you don't want to be fake. You don't want to just meet somebody just to gain something from them. You want to like bring something to the table too, or just treat them just like how you want to be treated. Like you don't want nobody trying to milk you for whatever you got going, you know? Yep. So it's the same thing. Just treat everybody with respect, treat everybody um, positive and things are going to work out. Um, and for me, uh, I ended up meeting, the right people when I went to that event that opened up the floodgates to allow me to opportunities right here. Like the song that happened with Lil Wayne, I didn't get that from me just knowing Lil Wayne. I got that from an intern A&R at Atlanta Records that I met back in 2016 that we just been building with since 2016 all the way up till now, where now we got cool and boom, he hit me on a play and was like, yo, I got this song I need a beat for it. What, what do you want to do? Boom, next thing I found out, the song with Lil Wayne 2 chains, and now I got a beat with him. You know what I mean? But that never would have happened if I didn't treat him with respect back in 2016 when he was just an intern. You know what I mean? So it's just like a relationship, just treating people how you want to be treated, being positive, just believing in yourself, believing in God, and just knowing that whatever's for you is for you. And it's just a matter of time. You just got to keep going. Exactly. And uh, just, just a point here for people who are... Um, new to the music industry um what what uh, six points is talking about is ascap is a pro right perform yep. performance royalties organization what does that do it collects mm -hmm. uh, it collects royalties from your performances if you need mm -hmm. if you want to get paid you need to register a lot of people a lot of musicians believe it or not they don't they don't know this or they don't they know they need to be uh, signed with either ascap bmi or another pro but they don't really understand why and the reason why is one uh, you need to get paid and they will collect uh, mm -hmm. the royalties too it's a great opportunity to like you said go to the ascap expo Uh, and make connections if that's your PRO and actually connect with different people in the industry and uh, establish relationships. And like you said, um, start to navigate and start making connections and present your, your, your music. Now, the next question would be, okay, so you go to ASCAP Expo in LA and how do you present yourself? Let's say, let's say I'm a young kid from LA Uh, I'm 16 years old and um, I got a music catalog of 10 songs, right? I have, yeah. my, I have my music on, on SoundCloud. Uh, if you're in my case, what would you do? You're going over there. Uh, what would you advise to a young kid, 16 years old, 10 songs catalog? Um, how, how would you go about it? Um, I think it all depends on what the end goal is. Now, if your end goal is to be signed, then obviously your mission should be to meet as many labels out there as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Meet who are the decision makers. Let them know who you are. This is what I've been working on. Let me play some of my songs. Mm -hmm. This is my vision. This is where I see myself going. This is what I want to do. Um, if your vision is getting into TV and film and just having your song being played in TV shows and video games, then it wouldn't be necessarily to go try to get signed to a label. It would be to go looking for music supervisors, music, looking for music editors music editors, excuse me, 
Mm -hmm. Um, If your goal is to get a manager, then same thing. You would treat that with energy of looking for management teams, looking for who's looking for new artists. Um, And you can do your due diligence because they'll give you a roster of who are the big wigs, like who are the labels going to be there, who are the managers, who are the A&Rs, such and so forth, to where you can do some research on them. And you can even, depending on what package you sign up for when you go to ASCAP Expo, you can even set up a one-on-one meeting with one of those guys. Um, And let's say, like for me, when I went, I was wanting to get my music into TV and film. So I set up a one-on-one meeting with a music editor because I know they're the ones that actually place the music into the songs. Um, so I got a one-on-one meeting with him, learned a lot of gems. He heard some of the music. I, I still have that connection to this day. And that was back in 2016, you know, so six years ago, and I'm still cool with him all from my one-on-one meeting at Ask Cup Expo. So I would say it really just depends. If I was 16 and I had 10 songs on SoundCloud, it would just depend on my end goal, what I want to accomplish, what I want to do. And from there, I would just make that happen. Um, and just go about it that way, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you are a music producer, so everybody has their own uh, scenario. In your case, as a music producer, uh, I'm assuming that you have uh, your own means of operation, I meaning you have your own studio, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you try to establish, um, do you try, because some music producers, they are established in, certain studios is that your case do you work both environments meaning you have your own means of operation meaning you have your own studio but you also go and work in other people's studio or how 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 do you navigate that yeah 100 percent um i'm all about convenience so sometimes like other artists they're not able to travel like that um or like if i'm out of town obviously they're not going to come all the way where i'm my studio is at i'm gonna go to wherever they're at Um, my whole thing is I just want to be flexible and just make sure that it's the positive result at the end of the day. So if they're local, yeah, pull up on me, come by, or I'll come to you. If they're not local, so you can fly in, we can work in my spot or wherever we need to work, um, let's make it happen. So I'm not just, um, only come to my studio or we're not working, um, whatever the, whatever the easiest play is, I'm for that. Awesome. What, what would you like to accomplish with your music career? What's your goal? And bro, like I was just telling you earlier, like I just want to make undeniable music that's going to last forever. Mm-hmm. I want to like, even if somebody doesn't know what my music is, but when they hear a beat from Six Points, they're going to know that, hey, that song right there is undeniable. I like that song. Who made that beat? Who made that song? Mm-hmm. Um, It could be a, a, a hip hop R&B song and it could be a guy that only likes alternative rock. But when he hears a song from Six Points, I want him to be like, that's not necessarily my lane, but I like that one right there. That song is a good song. That's my goal. That's awesome, man. Like, okay, let's let let's let's put a right in the open. What, what, who would you like to work with? Who are your major artists that you like your dream goal to work with? Name yeah. name, name three. Three. All right. Um. Obviously, number one would be Drake. Yep. We did one song with Drake. You out of there. <laughs> Good forever. Um, I, I love Drake. I love Drake. Right? Drake is amazing. <laughs> Um, so if I can work with Drake, I'll be, man, I'll be complete. Uh, I really am a big fan of Lil Uzi Vert. Okay. So I can get a song with Lil Uzi. Oof, that'd be a blessing. Okay. And then also I like R&B and the king of R&B is who? Chris Brown. Yep. So I get a song with Chris Brown, Lil Uzi, Drake. I'm good. Yeah, You're good on, on your dreams, yeah? Good, yeah, yeah. I work with everybody that I really wanted to. Everybody else, obviously, I want to continue to work with them. So if anybody sees this in the future, if I name you, hey, don't take this no hard way. I'm going to try to work with everybody that's talented. But he uh, he gave me three. I had to go three legends right there. And yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And they're pretty good choices. Now, what's the best advice you ever received in the music industry? What would you consider to be that? The best advice I received is to not compare myself to anybody else. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, with social media today, you'll look on Instagram and you see everybody else getting wins or getting money or getting placements or having big songs go out there, see their social media growing more than your social media is growing. Mm -hmm. And it can make you feel a little discouraged, right? You can feel like, dang, like, why am I not getting to where I need to go? Why am I not blowing up like that? Like, what's going on? What's wrong with me? And I just feel like the best advice I got was just to focus on myself. What's for me is going to be for me will always be for me so long as i just compete with myself only show up every day make beats go to networking events learn business learn how to network 
learn um, how artists are supposed to get paid, learn how producers are supposed to get paid, understand what I can control and just put my best foot forward and put my best work ethic forward, mm -hmm. everything else will fall into play. And I feel like that's what's been helping me get to where I've been so far. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what, what, what do you feel has been so far your biggest breakthrough? My biggest breakthrough probably was that Lil Wayne song that came out. Um, I was, I've been a Lil Wayne fan since I was like a kid. So um, the fact to get his vocals sent to me and I'm making a beat around his vocals was, that was like next level. I was like, what is this? Like, I didn't even believe it at first. I was like, this ain't real. <laughs> I was like, just stop playing with me. And then, yeah, next thing I saw the song go out and I was like, oh. Yeah. Can, can you talk about, I mean, I, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but obviously people will ask, okay, how, how, how did you manage to get, get that opportunity with uh, Lil Wayne? Can you talk yeah. about that or not? Or, I mean, it's, you, you right. can, you can say yay yeah, you or no, know, or like, um, going to yeah, the, no. I kind of, I kind of alluded to it already. Um, I got the opportunity from an intern that was at A&R. Uh, or he was an A&R intern at Atlantic back in like 2016. So obviously it didn't come right away. Um, but me just treating everybody with respect, me just just catching that vibe with, and treating the janitor at McDonald's the same way I would treat the CEO. You know what I mean? Like not overlooking anybody, not treating anybody worse than what they are just because we're on a different level. Um, I built with the interns and next thing you know, uh, he's no longer an intern at uh, Atlantic, he ended up getting an opportunity. I think he uh, is a songwriter now with signed a Murder Beats Gang, um, some Murder Gang. And then he hit me because he'd been seen me on social media for all these years, like really going crazy and consistent, providing work. And he was like, hey, man, um, I need you to make a beat for me. And I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll make a beat. Let's do it. Um, he paid me the invoice, uh, paid for the beat. And the next night he sent over the vocals. And just so happened to be the vocal he sent over was Will Wayne and 2 Chains. And I was like, what? And like I said, I didn't even think it was real at first. I was like, ah, quit playing with me. This must be like an old song yeah. from something back in the day that just didn't get released or anything like that. So I wasn't making anything of it. Um, but I made the beat around it. And the beat that I made initially, um, I kind of took it a different direction than the song that got put out. So I came one direction. Everybody liked it. Everybody approved of it. Lil Wayne approved of it. Uh, the songwriter approved of it. But they wanted to go more of like a dance summer type vibe. So I was like, all right. So I made a different beat, sent that over. Everybody approved that. And I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. So I was like, uh, did they like it? Did they not like it? It's kind of like nobody responding back to me right now. Uh, oh, well. But in the industry, you'll, you'll realize like you'll shoot emails and you won't hear nothing back. Um, so don't take it personal. Sometimes people that never got the email. Sometimes it's not the right time, whatever it may be. So I didn't take anything personal. I just kept moving, kept cooking. And next thing you know, like I think a month or two months later, I get a call saying, hey, you're not an engineer, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm not an engineer. And he was like, hey, can you um take the cuss words out of Lil Wayne and 2 Chainz verse? um, Because uh, the song's coming out next week and then you're clean version for the radio. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like, I thought y'all didn't even like the song. I didn't hear nothing about it. Like, it's coming out. Like, oh, wow, all right, cool. So I made the clean version, sent it back to him. Yeah. And I still didn't even believe it was real. I still yeah. didn't even believe it was real. And then, like, I think two weeks later, I checked the artist that was on it, one of the featured artists, and he posted the song. And I went and checked Spotify, and the song was right there. I checked the credits, and it produced my six points. And I was like, wow. That's awesome. Here we are. Let's go. That's really good. That's awesome. Now, uh, one of the things uh, why I bring people to the platform is to um, – Talk about the biz, but talk about the biz in a different way because most, most, the truth is most musicians don't really understand, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the music business, right? Because it's so fucking complicated and it's made, right. it's made by lawyers and executives that are screwing over the musicians. So mm -hmm. I try to make it simple, right? What, what would you consider is your, your business model? Can you like lay it out with a couple, a couple of lines, uh, meaning like uh, how do you distribute your music, your beats? Um, how do you have uh, your whole setup so you can actually uh, make it in the music industry? Yeah, so um, basically how I go about my model is um, I have structure for artists, independent or major, Mm -hmm. They want to um, purchase, obviously. 
uh, the music. I have it in leases. I have it in exclusives. Just depends on how they want to go about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and from there, that's how artists able to purchase. I'm also engineer, also DJ. Um, so I do a lot of different things to kind of like make myself valuable. Yeah. Um, and also from the networking that I've had, um, I'm also sending out beats for placing opportunities mm-hmm. uh, and just seeing what can happen that way. So I'm kind of like, I wouldn't consider it like a jack of all trades, but I'm putting myself, think of it like Walmart. Walmart, they don't have just one product to sell or one way of doing it, right? They have an array of things. So, so do you use uh, different platforms to do that? You make your beats available and your music, etc., so people can actually reach out to you. Is that how you work it out? Yeah. So um, I have my website I built. Um, I'm on BeatStars. There's an app called Boise. I put a lot of beats on there. It's like a free app where artists can like try out different beats and see what they like. It's only a loop, so it's not the full song. Right. Uh, and they can try out, see what they like, and then from there. Um, a lot of business comes from them trying it out. I'm like, hey, man, I really like this. I made a dope song to it. Can I um, purchase the beat? Um, so that happens. Um, YouTube, uh, word of mouth, beat competitions, networking events. Um, and then, like I said, just pulling up to different studios. And from that, like, psh, everything has changed for me, seriously. Yeah, makes sense. What's your viewpoint? I mean, we are uh, you and I are from a different generation. I have all sorts of people. I mean, I have really youngsters here. What, what's your viewpoint on the on, on the music industry? It does, it does seem to me, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna say anything, but it does seem to me <laughs> that uh, from different generations, the viewpoint seems to be similar. But I'm gonna ask you. We haven't talked a disclaimer. We haven't talked about this before the interview. What right. is your viewpoint about the music industry, honestly? today um i feel like my viewpoint is like it's really just if anything is now more so than any time before up to you to decide if you're going to make it or not Mm -hmm. whereas before back in the day you had to rely on the labels you had to rely on a gatekeeper Mm -hmm. oh your music is good enough you're in oh your music's not good enough you're out Yeah. Whereas like nowadays, you have the power of social media, you have the power of TikTok, you have the power of Instagram, you have the power of YouTube, you have the power of Facebook. Like, there's other avenues that you can build a whole fan base and build people who are rocking with your sound, rocking with your movement without having a major label behind it or yeah. without having radio streams behind it. Whereas back in the day, you needed a label, you needed radio to be known. Whereas yeah. nowadays, if you can just drop a, a dope TikTok that goes viral, Next, you know, you're famous. Yep. And then next, you know, the labels are now coming to you rather than vice versa. You go into them. So I would say today's industry is more in who can be the most creative, but who is the biggest go getter? I feel like the go getters are the ones that are winning right now because mm-hmm. they're figuring it out. They're being creative. They're stepping outside the box and doing whatever they have to do to like level up. And those are the ones that are winning and the ones that are just kind of just waiting for their moment. Who knows? You might be waiting for your moment for a long time because you got people out here that are going out and getting it, making 10 videos a day, dropping them on social media. Some are going to shake eventually, especially if you got good quality music behind it. So I would say that's the difference between back in the day and today is like it's really on you. Like when you wake up, you got 24 hours in a day. What are you going to do with that 24 hours? Are you going to go back to sleep? Are you going to watch movies all day? Are you going to play video games all day? Are you going to work on your craft? Are you going to make videos? Are you going to make content? It's all about content. And quality content, if you're not making quality content, people aren't going to gravitate towards it. So I would say it just depends on what the artist's end goal or producer's end goal or songwriter's end goal, whatever your end goal is, yep. find yep. out your niche and just go hard. Yeah, absolutely. Like, do you, do you, what, what's your, like, what's your favorite music tool that you use? What would that be? Uh, what would it be on a music tool? Like, what, what, what is your favorite tool that you use in music that is, uh, That's your favorite. Um, I use Logic mm-hmm. and um, I got a MIDI keyboard. Um, I use a bunch of different plugins, um, a bunch of different drums. So I guess that'll be my music tool if I'm, if I'm understanding you correctly. Yeah, yeah, you, you got it. It's Logic, basically. Okay, yeah, Logic. Yeah, I use Logic. Yeah, and a bunch of plugins that you usually use. Awesome. And uh, uh, favorite album of all times? I know, I, I know it's a difficult question. I'm sure you have a lot. But... 
Man. Um, just off the top of my head. Yeah. I would say Future's album, Pluto, his first one was super fire. Yeah, I love Future. Yeah, yeah Future's a beast. Yeah. Um, shoot, Nothing Was the Same by Drake. That was fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, there's so many, but probably those two are the ones that come to my head right now. So I'll probably go with one of those two for sure. Okay, great. That's an excellent choice. Now, if you are starting in the music industry today, knowing what you know, mm-hmm. experience that you have, your skills and knowledge, what would you do? Like starting all over again? Yeah. Let, let's say you have all your knowledge, your skill, mm-hmm. uh, everything that you worked so far, but you're starting today, no money, starting new, what would you do differently? Um, I'd probably go on TikTok and go crazy because TikTok is not biased by popularity. It's mm-hmm. all about talent. So mm-hmm. and you can make, as a, since I'm a producer, I would just be setting up and trying to make as many TikToks of me making beats or yep. me showing people the process and hearing the beat and then making a duet to the beat. And I feel like me doing that consistently, it could blow up to where people can start to know about me. Uh, so if I was starting from scratch today, I'll probably go hard on TikTok and I would just research a certain networking events and just try to get in the right rooms, like going to Atlanta, pulling up to Pathwork Studio, yeah. going to LA, figuring out how to get in the studios over there. Um, and just like, really researching like where these major artists are going, figuring out who's in their circle, trying to build a relationship with somebody in there, get an email, something. Yeah. Um, I would go to school for engineering to like learn because as a producer, if you can engineer and produce and be like a musician, psh, yeah. you tough. You yeah. can play an instrument, you can engineer a song and you can make the beat. You tough. There's not many people that are doing all three. So yeah. I would definitely learn that as well along with trying to get myself out there. So that'll probably be my biggest thing is TikTok, networking, and then getting to school for engineering and learning how to play the piano and all that musician stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, and you, in terms of social media, you already answered the question by saying TikTok. What, what's your favorite uh, social media to, to promote your music, to spread it out um, there? For me, I would say Instagram. That's where I built most of my following is on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm on Instagram more than the other platforms. So for me, it'd probably be Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like if I was looking to really get discovered from day one, then yeah, I'd probably go harder on TikTok. Um, but uh, yeah, I prefer Instagram for right now. Okay, great. Uh, now on a different subject, a fun question. Uh, you are going to be taken to a different planet. You can choose three things to take with you. What would that be? Ooh, I had to go to a different planet. Yes. Man, I get three things. So um, I'd have to choose TV. Yep. Um, my laptop and a PS5. Yeah. <laughs> what games would be on the PS5? Man, I've been on Madden tough lately. So yeah. anybody that want to see me on Madden, at your boy, IG, Six Points Music. Yeah. I got me on PS5. Let's go crazy. Are you on I'm Twitch? Uh, are you on Twitch? Mm-hmm. I'm on Twitch too. So you trying okay, to I got to follow you. I'm a big fan of Twitch. I'm a big yeah. fan of Twitch, yeah, uh, both for gaming, Twitch. both for yeah. gaming and um, how do you say, and uh, music. It's a great uh, form to promote yeah. your music there, right there. Uh, that's awesome, man. Um, like one of the things that I also uh, would like to ask you is, well, where do you see yourself in the next five years in terms of your career? Yeah, next five years, um, man, I honestly just see myself living in Malibu, mm-hmm. got my mansion. Mm-hmm. Uh, won a couple of Grammys already, yeah. a few Billboard records. Um, I'm also an actor too, so got a couple of actor yeah. Oscar Emmy Awards, got my music in the movies and TV as well too. So next five years, I just see myself being really yeah. successful and doing my best to give back because I feel like nobody gave me really game on how to get in. Mm-hmm. So that'd be one of the things I would do in the next five years when I'm there, 
is just like doing more of these to like give people the gems, tell them what they got to do to where they can speed up their learning process to get to where they want to go as well. I guess you already answered my uh, next question, which is I ask every guest on the show, which is what is music success in your life? Uh, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, music success in my life is really just seeing the others around me winning too. Like it's one thing for me to be successful and I'm up, but when my parents ain't working no more and I can retire them from the music money that I made, mm -hmm. uh, when I can go anywhere and I'm able to help somebody or have that provide influence to where when I speak, they listen just because they respect me from what they've seen on the radio or seen on TV of what I've been doing. I would deem success as that. Like I have now power to influence. Okay, hey, listen, uh, six points. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Uh, you, you're such a, a, a grounded person, and uh, um, I appreciate your time for being on the show. I wish you the best. I really wish you uh, all the success. Uh, I hope to get you back on the show and um, on uh, 2022 because you have some stuff coming up really important. And uh, I think uh, most of the listeners, besides myself, would like to know what's going on with the releases and uh, yeah, for the, for the people uh, there, so you can see on, on the platform, the main thing is here. Like uh, I have all sorts of people on the show and some people ask me, well, why would you bother with people who are not even famous? Uh, the point is you can learn from anybody and uh, people have different experiences and they have different uh, uh, skills and subjects where you can learn from. And that's the whole point. So right. you, you can learn from the person who is just starting and uh, you can learn from the person who is really connected. Uh, so it was really a, ple a pleasure to have you here. And uh, I got to ask, what's the best way people can connect with you and listen to your yeah. music? Yeah, um, thank you, Rui, for just giving me the opportunity to hop okay. on your podcast. Yeah. I'm super grateful um, to be able to share my experience and share my story. Hopefully yeah. it resonated with at least one person to where it helps them get to where they need to go. Um, yeah, if you want to connect with me, follow me on Instagram at number six points music. Um, mm -hmm. It's similar for Twitter, um, Facebook, Snapchat is TV six points. We're on Boise, six points music. Um, like I said, if you want to holler at me on the game, hop on 2K, hop on Madden, uh, gamer tag IG six points music, and you can find me on there too. Awesome. Uh, please connect with Six Points on Instagram and uh, you can find all the resources and everything else we've been chatting about in today's episode by going to musicsuccess.com and enter Six Points in the search bar. And this episode, along with all the show notes, will pop right up. Uh, Six Points, thank you so much for being generous. It's a really uh, real pleasure to have you here today. Uh, all the success I really wish you. Uh, and uh, to our listeners, Either you're watching us on YouTube or on podcast um, version, uh, just remember, I want you to be successful because your success is really my success. And don't forget to live your dreams. Very important. I'll see you in the next show. Take care. Be safe. See you soon.